So, thank you very much for coming. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, truth is that um, I can talk about this topic for, I don't know, five days in a row, because I really think that uh, buying, flipping websites has a lot of potential for people earning, uh, making extra income, increasing their business, and basically doing something they love. A lot of people are stuck with uh, doing something that they don't like, don't like or even hate. Uh, and there are so many websites and, and, and opportunities out there for finding something you love and then make it into an, your income, then why not? So that's the, that's the premise. So, uh, Gate said a little bit, I'm an entrepreneur for the past 18 years, most of them in digital marketing, although I'm electrical engineer, but uh, I don't really like to do that anymore. Actually, many years I'm not doing that anymore. I'm a financial coach. I help people with organizing their finances uh, to reach financial freedom faster, and then I create a 20, 30 year plan for them to reach the important things in life, which is not mortgage or pension. It's the things that we really want for ourselves, like a trip around the world and things like that. How do you put that into a plan? That's, that's what I teach people to do and help them do. I built a company in China. I don't know if you can see this. Because you see yeah, it's been uh, I built a company in China in Beijing for three years um, where we do mobile app distribution for foreign companies in the Chinese market. Uh, I'm not involved in that company anymore, but definitely uh, was a wonderful experience and something I really miss Beijing. Uh, and definitely helped my entrepreneurship journey. Uh, arrows, arrows. The book. You see there, so that one, uh, world record, so if you didn't get, I think I gave all of you, Gabriel, I think you're the only one that doesn't have one, so, yeah. so take a copy. Um, so this book is a book I contributed to. Um, there are 100 or even a little bit over 100 writers in there, and the, the uh, world record is most nationalities contributing in the business book. That's the one, you get that. Uh, I spoke about hacking your life and finances. That's my topic this for financial coaching. Uh, and it's marked there on the, with the, that little bookmark there. Now, why am I eligible talking about flipping websites? Well, what's the thing for me? I can laugh a lot about digital marketing and uh, many people do that. So I am in this industry for the past almost three years now. Started looking at different opportunities and I found a wealth of, of, of opportunities and, and what you can do with that. So far, uh, I bought three websites. I have a roofing website um, talking about, it's basically information about roofing and I grew that website. I have uh, recently acquired a quotes website, so that's a quote platform. Not famous quotes, but people who have their own quotes. We have over 195,000 quotes in there uh, and people are adding that every day. Uh, I used to have a website about automotive. That's the one you see in the middle. That was not a good acquisition. <laughs> I found out that I don't like that niche so much um, and I sold it a loss. But uh, of course, uh, um, I, I, I get improved. I, I improve with each, each uh, acquisition, the things that I learn. Um, and I'm always looking for more. And basically now I'm also doing, uh, I'm seeing a lot of deals every week. Um, at all marketplaces, uh, Facebook groups, and I do consulting either for individuals finding their next websites or training them to run their own website and grow it, or for companies looking for uh, basically buying and acquiring a marketing channel. So uh, we've done the uh, what is your business because Gabe did it already, so we'll skip this. So what, what are the benefits of investing in a niche website. So first of all, it's very low to start in terms of investment. You need hosting and domain. There are many times that there are other expenses. Some of them are ongoing, some of them are 
just a one-time thing, uh, like an investment. Let's say you want to uh, add more content, so you create a content writer to write something. Or um, if you have a plugin that you need to buy for your website, then that's another expense. Usually it's, it's a yearly expense. But the basic, basic ones are just hosting a domain. So we're talking about $15 a year. A year, yes. Ridiculous. Uh, except of that, uh, it's a potential for passive, but it's a semi-passive income. Many websites, uh, usually you don't want to buy yourself another job. Okay? You don't want to spend 40 hours a week on other websites. Um, and most websites are not like this, meaning it's basically several hours a week and uh, can be reduced to just a couple of hours a week with running a website. It can be a fairly large one uh, that can bring in another few thousand dollars. As the website grows more, you probably need a small team then. I have a virtual assistant because I do uh, those two websites and my uh, financial coaching business. So he's a full time with me. But uh, basically you can do that on your own with freelancers and, and uh, for yourself, yes. You said the website grows more, you'll need more of the teams. What are the, um, the scale? What's a small website, what's a big website, what's a medium website? So it really depends if you're looking at traffic or looking at revenue. I'm actually going to go into this uh, uh, Next slide. Uh, however, um, as example, yesterday I got a private deal a friend sent me um, of a website that's making a net of $40,000 a month, okay? And that was run by a team of four, four people, okay? So the 40,000 is net after you pay everybody, okay? So this website's probably worth, so yeah, around the, uh, between a million and a half to two million dollars. That's a big website, at least for us, okay? Maybe not, not for Google, okay? Um, and the other thing is for businesses, basically you can just acquire something which is right for you. But again, I'm talking about also talking about passion and finding things that we love, so you can think it of also in, in, in another way, saying I have a special interest in writing, okay? So I want to buy a website about this. Or I have a business for a B2B, uh, uh, so I, I want to buy a website that already has all the companies in there or, or something like that, so you have the traffic already for that one. Um, but basically there is really endless, endless, endless opportunities to finding your, your website, the, what is right for you. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of opportunity with this thing. But what is a niche website? So people, when I'm talking about content websites, what exactly is that? So really, there is a, a whole list here. Uh, need the, oh, sorry, it's the slide. There. Um, so really, the most common ones are content websites. And talking about content websites, it's a, it's a website with a lot of content on it in a certain niche, um, usually information, but can also be with uh, reviews about different products. Um, like my roofing website, okay? It, most of it is information about roofing. I have a bunch of calculators there. I have some review about products there. That, that's a classic content website. But it can be other things. It can be e-commerce and dropshipping businesses. People who have inventory and they have the traffic there. It can be a Shopify store. That's, that's a good example. It can be newsletters. People sometimes have newsletters without a website. It's just a newsletter with a couple of thousands or tens of thousands of people in a certain niche. Again, that's a marketing uh, channel. If you buy that list instead of building it, that saves you time. That list can also already making money. So you're not only buying the emails, you're buying the, the also their attention for, for listening to whatever you're publishing. So people done the work for you, that's what I'm trying to say. Other examples would be Amazon FBA stores. Uh, FBA is fulfillment by Amazon, so people buy inventory from China, they send it to Amazon warehouses, and Amazon fulfills the, the orders. Uh, of course you pay for this, but that, that's another uh, example. Lead generation websites, that's for you. 
Uh, what else I have here? SaaS businesses, this is one I, I, I'm now looking at. So SaaS is everything which you, you basically pay subscription for. It's much more lucrative to have somebody paying over and over and over every month or every year instead of coming to your website one time, uh, either clicking an ad or, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, going into your review and buying something on Amazon, then they're gone. Yes. So, so when I'm looking at buying websites or what I call easy wins, I'm thinking of how can I build it further to add something to an existing website so it can, it can earn more. I don't want to stay at the same level. You want yes. to buy a product in you. I, I want to bring the person to, to stay with me. Yes, exactly. Um, online services business, that can also be a good example for you, Alien. Uh, SaaS, oh, that's right, sorry. And browser extensions. So you have all these extensions on Chrome that you download. These are businesses, they can be freemium, so they, you download them for free, and then you pay extra for uh, more features. Where's my cup of tea? You have like a free version and a premium version that you pay for? Yeah. It it usually, like, it's, again, it's, it's a kind of a SaaS. Or, it seems like some of these are uh, an easy lift, and keep running after you buy it. Some of them are, 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 are more work. Yes, exactly. Like, uh, the the content e website is probably easier and exactly. Like yes, this is easy. Um, users, so so. Um, SaaS is more complicated because you sometimes need a developer and it's kind of you need a team. It's more complicated, but you get their attention. Um, I so I, I know of stories of people who are not non tech and still bought SaaS. They learn how to manage it and they run it. They run it straight. It's possible. Sheldon Stark has invoices. Yeah, for example. He's not a tech guy, that's the Yeah, he's not, yeah, he's not a tech guy. He's like an entrepreneur. Okay. Let's give a few examples. Can you see this? Yeah. Can you see the. Yes. Yeah? I don't okay. see the website that well, but. Uh, What's Lambo? Lambo cars. Lambo cars. Lambo cars. Uh, this is a website about uh, Lamborghini cars. Okay, a content website about Lamborghini cars. I don't remember what how much it was listed for. Uh, but talking businesses, let's say you had a car dealership. You want to buy that website, right? To bring people in. Uh, but if you're just interested in cars, then you want to buy this because you're interested in cars and make money from it, and that's okay too. Hmm. A website like this about Lamborghini, like enthusiastic teenagers who want to know things about Lamborghinis or people who love Lamborghinis, this is the only thing it supplies, information about Lamborghini. Yes, but um, when you buy a website, again, you want to think of the growth. So you think how to develop when, you're more. At the, when you're looking at the listing, and okay? more features. And I'll show you a listing in a minute uh, of, when, of what's on that, on what are you actually buying, then you'd see, uh, You'd look at it and see, okay, maybe, um, is there a newsletter there? If there's no newsletter, you probably want to build a newsletter for giving more information to people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you more examples. This is a gaming website. That's for Avi. Uh, do you know uh, Salmon War Masters? No! Ah, oh, that's so disappointing. <laughs> what is it? So what, what? It's, a, it's a, name, a, a name of a game, I don't know. Something more. Okay. Yes. That was something a game. This is a gaming website. So let's say you have uh, some kind of a, a service for, for gamers. Okay? That's something that the website you want to acquire. Or if you just like the game, you want to acquire this website. That would be another example. And this one is a SES. This is actually a deal I was looking at about a year ago. Less than a year ago. Uh, you know uh, Wordle, I assume. Yeah. You've heard of Wordle, right? So this is a Wordle generator. Word.rodeo. What it does, you uh, go there and you send, send a personal Wordle to your friend. That's the free version. But what happens if you want to create a specific Wordle for your website? That's the SaaS idea there. So they had, let's say, they have uh, one website which is uh, about uh, Miami, the city of Miami. So they had words only about Miami on that wordle. And they uh, embedded that on their website. So they used this service, 
I don't remember how much they pay every month, pay $50 a month to use that on their website. So that's a SaaS. Uh, that was, when I looked at it, it was listed for 16 or 15 or 15,000, I don't remember if it was dollars or euros. Then uh, uh, the buyer, the seller increased it to 20 or 21. I think we then started negotiation on 19. And eventually I decided that it's too risky for me because uh, Wordle was actually declining with, with traffic and I didn't know what's gonna happen. Uh, recently he sold that website. I don't know how much. And Wordle is still around. So I probably, that was a bad decision. But that's an example of a SaaS. Where do you find those websites, the niche websites? So the most, the biggest marketplace in the world for that is Flippa, flippa.com, where you have basically everything, content websites, SaaS, um, the domain names, uh, you name it, everything digital is there, okay? GoDaddy is for buying domains, okay? okay? But if somebody bought a domain, Okay. and want to sell it, resell it, uh -huh. they, they can do it through GoDaddy as well, but they also, they do it through the uh, One more thing is age domains, and when I'm talking about age domains, it's websites that, there was already content on them, then somebody took the website down because they didn't need it, but still, uh, the domain exists, and Google knows that there was content there on a specific niche, so that's, that domain then worth more, so people who sell these kind of, websites as well. Oh, What's that? Uh, can you buy Flippa? Mm -hmm. Can you buy Flippa? I think it's uh, 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 a public company. Uh -huh. So probably 10, 20, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember how many. <laughs> uh, another uh, good uh, platform or broker is Empire Flippers. That's where I bought my first website for, uh, and they're doing more of the vetting for the seller and the earnings of the website. So it's kind of a more, uh, Flippa is a wild out west, okay? They're getting better, but you don't know what you're getting into. Empire Flipper is, Flippers is safer, but you pay more for the websites. Motion Invest is another one, uh, another marketplace, but to be honest, there are about probably 15 other marketplaces around there for finding websites. Another way to find websites is through private Facebook groups, please. Website flipping, buy and sell websites. Don't worry about all these resources. Uh, if you uh, uh, prepare your phones, I have a QR code to download all the resources. Um, so yeah, uh, basically uh, uh, private Facebook groups. And the last one are private deals. I'll show you some examples. This is Flippa, right here. The number one marketplace for buying and selling websites. Okay. Um, now they have 5,471 websites listed there. Just to compare, uh, on Empire Flippers, there are about between one to 200. Okay, so Flippa is a giant. And uh, here, this top website, this one is for around quarter of a million dollar. And uh, this one is a, a, a prepping website. It's actually two websites for prepping. Prepping are all the people who think about the end of the world. So they're building shelters and they're hoarding food and all that. That's the number, it's saying on the listing, it was a red fort nine-year-old website uh, for uh, helping preppers prepare, basically. So it's an information website about this. Like prepping, buy that website. Uh, that's uh, an example from the one of the groups. Uh, so I'll read a little bit of this. So Adil is selling my one-year-old websites for gardening niche built on a relevant 22-year-old domain. The website has very strong potential for growth as it has been making this income with just 29 posts in total, blah, 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 blah. Currently is monetized through Azoic, that's an ad network, and Amazon. The average income per month is, uh, 12 months, is $247. It's listing here some of the uh, specifics of the website. That This uh, screenshot is from a platform called Antrefs. This is where you see the information about Yes, Ahrefs. What do you call it? Ahrefs. Yes, you have it in the resources. 
uh, for seeing the information about the website can understand if you, it's really worth looking. Take these with a grain of salt. Okay? You really need to make your due diligence on this. Yes. What's the charge of AWS, how much the income they're making? How can you make sure it's authentic and they're not lying about their income? They say their income is $1,000 a year, and actually $400. You're right. So the safest way in these kind of cases, so first of all, first of all, if you buy things through Empire State Press, it's safer. Okay, they verify the income. You still need to do your, your work. So here's a platform that makes sure everything is Yes, it. here it's not, and this is a private Facebook group. It's just someone. No, okay, but okay. Yes, but then what you can do is ask him either to make a screencast, because you can fake, uh, you can fake images. You can fake everything. But uh, you can also, yeah, you're right. But the best thing, just go on a Zoom call and then just record this screen, screen showing you this. Or hire someone. Or hire someone <laughs> from yes. the due diligence for you. You have the banner for me to go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it in the YouTube video. Yes. Um, so it says right there that it's expecting a 35 multiplier on the monthly income. Yeah. So that's like $8,600. Yes. And he says it's reasonable. Is that really reasonable? 35? Yes. That's about very, very reasonable. Yes. So multipliers are the, the most common one and between. 30x to 45x of the net monthly revenue of the website. So, website making $1,000 would be from 30 to 45,000. There are lower ones. There are lower ones. There are uh, higher ones. But that's kind of the number. Really? What kind of effort does it take to get to 35x? No, no, no. The website already, when you buy it, it's always 35x. It's making. Oh, I see. I see. So that's the price is benchmarked at the red benchmark. Oh, I see. So he expects around. You made a calculation around eight thousand. Eight thousand six hundred dollars. Okay, for for this website. Is it still available? I don't know. It says thirty two minutes ago. Oh. Oh man. But that screenshot was taken. Um. And private deals. This is my Twitter account. Do you have an abandoned? Do you have an abandoned website? I might buy it. Shoot me a PM. Can you see the replies there? People uh, basically giving me offers. Even when you start discussing with people on private Facebook groups, and they see that you're interested, then they'll send you all kind of, of, of uh, website that you want to sell. Usually, people from uh, India, Pakistan. Uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't buy from them. It's just that these are the most common ones. Uh, and make your own due diligence on this. Uh, just the other day, just yesterday, I had somebody uh, offer me three websites in gaming tech niche, and uh, then I, I was like, no. And he's like, ah, I have another one. And it's like, no, ah, I have another one. <laughs> I have another one. <laughs> yeah. Pricing, you asked me about this. So, if the website is making money 30 to 45x uh, of the net revenue, of the last three to 12, months. The more months, the better, uh, and therefore it also increases the, the multiplier. If you give, uh, if you have a revenue history of only three months, then of course the, the multiplier will be lower. Why would you buy a no revenue website? So, <clears throat> already has the grant work done. Right? If, exactly. So you basically have already a lot of the content, you probably also already have some traffic. Mm. So you want to buy that? Um, it really depends how big is the website. Yeah. It could be that it's somebody just didn't monetize. It, it's they're pretty rare, but sometimes yeah. you can find websites that are not monetized, yeah. um, and they have a very good content. I actually my last website. It's not a content website. It's the quotes platform. Yeah. I think that was a very good deal. So I bought this website with thirty thousand, no, forty thousand people on the website every month, yeah. and it cost just a few thousand dollars. Very hard to find. Yeah. It also um, depends how much money you want to invest when you buy your website. Yes, it also depends on your budget. If you want to invest hundred thousand dollars, you buy something with a lot of traffic. Uh, yes, but you have the exceptions like I just said with yes, this quote when I something cheap but very. Yeah, it has a lot of potential, yeah. and I think that can be a probably one hundred, two hundred thousand dollar website. So how do you monetize quotes? How do I monetize quotes? Yeah. So what we did so far is. Uh, adding ads for the Google website. Ads. Hmm? Google ads? No, I'm going to talk about that. Um, adding ads, that's the main thing. 
uh, the next thing would be, uh, and it's not the next thing, then another thing would be uh, adding a newsletter, which we don't have, you can monetize a newsletter. Uh, because we have 95 or 96,000 email addresses of people. So we can use that. And, um, but what I discovered after speaking with a few users is that people are interested to verify their own quotes. They want, to sh they want somebody to check and show, this is my quote, no, it's nobody but. Like you write a patent? This is my yes. quote all over the world? So this is what we're building. And we, we just last week uh, had a proof of concept. Some, we, we put a kind of a banner saying uh, buy for 40% 40, 40 credits, 40% uh, uh, discount credits for verifying. Somebody, somebody bought. So we verified that people are willing to pay for this and now we're going to scale up. Everybody wants to know you're the only one, it's the only one, and it's registered somewhere, yes. so he's willing to pay for it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do uh, going forward with improving the optimization and giving a better offer. This is why I'm saying it has such a big potential. Yeah. That website was sold to me for around $3,500. I don't know about it. Yeah. Would you call that SaaS? That's a SaaS. Because people. You're SaaSifying your website. I'm SaaSifying. I'm, I'm, uh, one more word about SaaSifying. <laughs> Actually, that, that, that was a one time sale. That, that credit, but again, that was proof of concept. Now we're going to make it SAS. There, there you yes. Um, for sassifying, that's a good one. Sassifying a. I, 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 I want to verify it's my quote. <laughs> go, to, go to ownquotes.com, put your quote there, pay the credits, you'll get it. It's a panel still there. I'll, I'll put that. Um, and, uh, a way to uh, grow a website and make it kind of a SAS, so we have all those subscription boxes of different niches. So let's say you have a website about uh, crafts. So you, you advertise there, or you're an affiliate of a sub subscription box, and they pay you every month because they, they because the clients pay you every month. So it's a way to make a SaaS of something which you cannot be a SaaS from, or do something else creative, of course. But that's another, that's an idea to do. You could do like quote of the day, or you know, like. But that's for, that's a newsletter. That's where we're going with. Yeah. Uh, but the SaaS one we kind of will probably make us more money to begin with, so yeah. we'll first do this one. What's the reason, reasonable uh, amount of money that you can charge uh, a subscriber? A monthly subscription? A what? No. For your user, for your user, the website. They pay for you to send them every week, like, uh, you know, like you send them, you know, like updates. No, no, no. So there are paid unit newsletters that's possible to build. Uh, but I'm talking about uh, a free newsletter in this case for the quarter. How, how do you, um, for newsletters, how do you monetize newsletters? So selling them uh, or affiliate with different products that interest them, uh, ads inside the newsletters, sponsored newsletters, send them back to your website for a post that you wrote and then they click on an ad so you bring them back. Mm -hmm. Both of options. Um, yeah, and the price range for websites are between a few hundred dollars for starter websites to, I wrote here 20 million, but mm -hmm. I don't know, it's like any number, basically. This is the Empire Flippers Marketplace, and we're talking about multipliers. It's very hard to see here, but you see, as example, this website in the book snitch. Oh, and that's actually uh, Amazon KDP. That's something I did not mention. So they have all this uh, Kindle um, platform for Amazon. So that's his KDP. Uh, Kindle something something. I don't remember. What's Kindle? Huh? What's Kindle? Kindle is the e-reader of Amazon. So you buy a book. Uh, basically an e-book. And uh, people write books and then sell their business. This one is selling for $362,000. And it's making a net of $2,142. And that's a multiplier of 29. Yeah. Okay? This is KDP, 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 KDP. This one is an affiliate. This one is for Ben and Bath. That's the niche selling for $101,000, making $3,486. It's a multiplier of 29. But there are other multipliers 33, 35, 43, 35, all kinds. And here, you can't see that well, but this is the pricing period that they have, it's a it says 12 months, 12 months, so the number of months that you have of payment history, of earnings history. This one is just nine, for example. So, 
this is this is what you'll see when you're browsing through marketplaces and, and brokers, mm -hmm. these kind of things. How do websites make money? We spoke a little about this already, but you have ad networks, private ads, Amazon Associates and Affiliate, actually the same thing, but Amazon Associates is the affiliate program of Amazon. It's so big that it has its own category. Um, <clears throat> private affiliate deals. Here's a good one for finding growth with a website. Uh, let's say that you find out that uh, there is a, some, some brand which is a bestseller for you through your affiliate ads to Amazon. Then you get in touch with them privately and telling them, uh, I'm going to promote you even more, um, but for every sale, you're not going to pay me only the 3 4% that Amazon is paying me by selling your product. Pay me another 10 or 20% for the product. Okay? That will increase your revenue by more very easily. It's a matter of developing this relationship. So you can do that with, with a lot of uh, content websites. Just just go and, and talk to uh, talk to the brands about these kind of things. Uh, lead generations. So my roofing website was only a content website. I then build uh, a lead generation service. I now uh, help people help roofers getting basically business. So people ask for to fix their roof. That goes through a network that sells those leads, and I'm getting paid for those leads myself, I don't need to go and find clients. But there is a network for that. You can sell your own product. I developed a, a, an, an, an ebook for the roofing website. That product doesn't work, but I tried it. And specifically with this probably can be, can be done better. Um, selling services, memberships, SaaS we mentioned, and donations. The Quotes website as example was running on donations through uh, Patreon. Uh, making very little, but people sometimes just want to support a website just because it's there. So uh, it was making nine dollars and sixty-nine cents every month. No, 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 maybe a million. Maybe a million. Want to donate your million dollars? What's that? Maybe a million. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Like to donate maybe a million dollars because we like to call call people. Uh, another example of an easy win for for web for ad networks. So you spoke about uh, you said about AdSense. Ad AdSense. Google. Uh, Google. Right, so th these are AdSense. However, uh, that's, uh, I wouldn't say the worst, but not one of the good ad networks. What you want to do is go to other ad networks, such as uh, one called Zoic. That, that will be other resources, so don't worry about that. Which also uses the AdSense inventory. And they have an AI engine that basically learns what kind of ads are good for your... Uh, yeah, I, well, they have kind of a robust one, and once you get to that, uh, now there is no minimum to go into his own, so you have nothing to lose. Okay, they pay more. Google, you have a No, but they pay less. Okay, mm -hmm. Zoic pays more, and after you get to a certain threshold with your with your uh, monthly views, then you have Media Buy, which is about 50,000 users per month, and then you have yeah. Adrive, which is 100,000, and they pay even more. Yeah. So you want to scale up, yeah. okay? You want to scale up, but the Zoic is a no-brainer for an easy win. You see a website with AdSense uh, making uh, $500, you put the Zoic, that will be another $100, $200 very easily. Okay? Maybe not, maybe between 50 and 100. So Again, but it's a growth. You can find a cool. website with substantial revenue using AdSense. What's that? Well, you, can, you can find a website with substantial revenue using AdSense. Mm -hmm. Switch to Zoic and just flip it, having right. have right. increased your X. Right. Right. That. Sometimes you want to hold the website. Sometimes you want to. Well, you want to hold it for a few months so they can get the inventory, and then you want to hold it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Whenever I want to call you here, I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's about ad networks and easy wins. Oh, one more thing about private ads. So once you have the ads, AdSense, Zoic, you name it, you know how much money you're making from a certain page or from your whole website. So you can then approach a relevant, uh, a relevant uh, company and tell, tell, tell them, you know, uh, you know basically how much you want to sell the ad for them. If you're making $200 from a page every month, you can tell them, okay, I'm gonna take charge 300. They don't need to know it, but you know what's your margin for making more money from that. Again, these are easy wins that you can do once you have the data. 
once things work and you, you know how much you make. So, we spoke about investment strategies. Diversify with uh, a single website, and that is if you have, if you just want to do, uh, you know, you have your job, so you just want to have another income, so, so that's fine. That's diversification from only your job or from another kind of investment, it's another opportunity. It's another uh, option. Another one is building a portfolio of websites. This is what I'm doing, is either the same or a different niche. You can also you know, interconnect between your websites. And um, another one is strategic buying, and this is more for businesses, or maybe you have access to an audience that other people don't have, so you're specifically looking for a certain website for growth. These are the three options for, for, for investment strategies. Skills, what do you need to know or do when you are investing in a website? Project management, very important, managing all tasks. It's definitely something you need to do. I won't remember everything. I have a virtual assistant that helps me with this. SEO, you don't need to be well, an SEO right, expert. Just a quick second. Uh, Shlomo's wife, Michal, is also a project manager. And if anyone wants to buy a website and wants a project manager for that website, thank you. Call for it. This <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so SEO. WordPress is a must. Hmm? WordPress is a must. Because WordPress. WordPress so most of the websites that are sold are on WordPress. You don't have to. I have my default website actually on PHP. Maybe. Yeah, no, exactly. PHP, exactly. Everything Fine. just not WordPress. Fine. Just so you know <laughs> that maybe it will be harder for you to sell because they don't know how to. So maybe it will have a lower valuation. But fine, it's okay. You can change it. Maybe that's the reason that I, I sold my that I bought the website so cheap. Okay, because I had to to you know it's, it's, HP. it's rock HP, all, no all framework, no nothing. Okay, nothing. Well, it's good. It's working. Yeah. Uh, affiliate marketing, you need to know WordPress, you just said. Uh, I want to say about SEO. You don't need to be an SEO expert. You don't. You need to know what to do with SEO and uh, uh, understand basic research. If you need something better, you, or let's say deeper, you might hire a consultant to do some of the work, either on a one-time or an ongoing basis. Depends. But if it's not necessarily, we can have an online course, it depends how much they're updated, because things change all the time. There is something called Google Updates, I'll really talk about that, which you want to be careful of. So affiliate marketing, Finance, of course, managing all this, making sure you're actually making money. Negotiation, I gave a few examples with, with brands uh, or content writers. Content management and hiring, of course, if you have any VAs or any other people you work with, you want to do some of that. Yeah? No? No? Um, do you have any book recommendations for these skills? For these skills? Yeah. Anything that like you read that helped you? I I just do. You just to do. To be honest. <laughs> uh, there is a course that really endless courses, online courses about WordPress and SEO. Yeah. Actually about all, all of those. You'll, you'll find everything that you need and if you want something specific, come ask me. Right. Risks. First of all, valuation risks. How do you know that what you buy is actually worth what you're paying for? So after almost a year, no, a little bit less, I held my roofing website. I spoke, spoke to somebody who, um, uh, this guy, Mushfik, he flipped already over 200 websites. And uh, I'm following his work, and uh, he teaches and has courses about uh, website flipping. And I'm going on a call with him, looking at my roofing website, telling me what the, what's the growth, what, what should I invest in next, what should I do there? And he's like, oh, so you paid for this 30,000? That that was paid for this thousand something for the website. He's like, and then, then he's saying something like, uh, okay, you already paid that, so never mind. And it's kind of, okay, I overpaid. I overpaid for this. <laughs> you learn that. Profit. Huh? You paid over. You overpaid, but how do you still make profit? Out of it's still, there's still cash flow every month. Yes, yes, still cash flow. Um, anyway, that's a risk. It's something that you need to do. That you need to take into account. Google updates, uh, usually core updates. So Google uh, update their uh, search rankings 
a few times a year without, notice, without uh, noticing anyone. And then the whole community of website flippers and investors like, there's a Google update. And then uh, everybody's like, okay, let's just wait for this to, to pass. Uh, and sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down and sometimes nothing happens, okay? Because they, the, that's, that, that's the way it is. But it could be, and on the last Google update, my roofing website was hit at about 40% down. Uh, so you need to mitigate those stuff and also take this into account. Affiliate programs change. So two years ago, Amazon associates the affiliate program everybody uses, or many, many people use, cut their affiliate commissions by 50%. So just imagine, in one day, without free notice. Yes, F. Yes, F. Yes. Okay, you, weigh, you made from affiliate $1,000, next day, 500 Okay. Seasonal websites, so think about all websites. Sometimes they just don't make, they make very little during the year. So it's, think about the skiing websites, okay? They'll peak months as would be December to February. All the other time, okay? So that's, that's a risk. My roofing website is semi-seasonal, okay? For the winter. The low, what? For the winter. No, it's not. The lowest months is December. Really? Yes, nobody, and the fixes uh, the roof, fix the in, roof in, in the summer. <laughs> nobody the fixes the their roof right. when they are on holiday in Christmas. Uh, nobody does that. Yeah. Okay? That was terrible once, must say. I think it's right. right. You think global. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. uh, Google penalties. If you did something wrong, and sometimes just Google uh, punishes you for things that you've done wrong, you need to mitigate those things. You need to be careful of those. The penalties are fine. And fraud. No, you just 90, you lose 90% of your traffic. Oh, <laughs> or, 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 or out of the index at all. It ends up in money eventually. Yes. I think, I think I realized something. Yeah, um, what's a penalty? Like, what can you do wrong? There are like, uh, protocols that you're not supposed to do things. So, uh, content that you're not supposed to, uh, to no. publish. Or, uh, a lot of the times it's when you have their ads on as well. But not always. The Google ads, AdSense. If you have them on. If you have them on, but Zoic also uses AdSense, so you need to be careful of this. For example, the quotes websites, the quote website, we can't put the ads on all pages because some of the quotes are, uh, can be, you know, the, what's the term for that? So all, only for older, or only for adults. Uh, adult only. Adult only X-rated. content, X-rated. okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's not in that level X-rated, but still, Google would say it's inappropriate, yeah. okay? So, if there'll be an ad on that, we'll be penalized. Yeah. Maybe if you also use the security trip or something, but then, but then they need to complain to Google. Ah, they have to complain. Yeah, yeah there, there's, a, there's a process, yes, there's a process. Yeah, it's like dropshipping. There are certain protocols in eBay, Amazon, that you can uh, break, otherwise you'll be fine. You'll be, uh, yes. There's a, and fraud. Imagine you bought a website and the numbers are not right. Uh, imagine somebody sells you a website that they don't really own. You got these kind of stories, so be careful. Um, so if you bought a website, right, then all the profit is now in your name. That, that means you have to pay taxes on it, no? Yes. So how do you go about paying taxes on money that you didn't even collect? What do you mean you didn't collect? Because the, the, let's say they didn't file taxes and it, it transferred to your name. Um, is there a tax issue there? Once so you make a like profit in any income? country, you pay you pay taxes. So in Wait. Israel, you need to be a Osek uh, Patur, Osek Moshe. In other countries, it's a different way. Uh, once you're getting to a certain level, it's probably worth opening a company to do that. Uh, yeah, there are tax implications. I think the thing is, Anything that happens before you buy the website yeah. isn't your problem. It's only revenue you get afterwards. You okay. so you the name. Okay. The Even if they didn't file their taxes. Yeah, yeah it's all your problem. You have, okay. you have, the once the money is in your account, you have the problem. Gotcha. Whatever you get in there. You won't be charged for tax until you... Okay, due diligence, we spoke about... Uh, well, we spoke about yeah. And there's a minimum also in Israel. If you don't earn enough money, you won't pay tax. You know? Yeah. What's the minimum? Five thousand. Yeah, 5,000, 6,000. Net, okay, not not revenue. Okay. Uh, when you're looking at a website for due diligence, you need to look at these 
main things, okay? Link profile, you see that through different tools. What kind, uh, what brings a website to be worth is its authority, that Google see this as authority, and this means getting links and good links from big websites, okay? That's, these are the, the, the best ones. So you wanna look at the link profile, you wanna make sure that these are strong websites linking to your website or to that website you're about to buy, or um, that they're not uh, uh, sex websites that link to your website. Again, that, that's a kind of, that's a bad thing to have. Uh, gambling, you don't want those. What are the top keywords that their website is ranking for? Are these buyer intention uh, keywords? Uh, if somebody is looking for, let's say the roofing website, best roofing shoes, and I'm ranked uh, high enough, that's a buyer intent uh, keyword, because you know that the person searching for that is looking to buy uh, roofing shoes. Yes. Roof, you're talking about roof because the website is about roofing? Yes. So it's power word. Power word? Yes. Yeah. Power word. Strong word. Ah, strong word, yes. Strong word. Yes. In the keyword. Yes. But it, could be, the but it could be anything. It depends on the, it's depends on the situation. But yeah. you need to understand what the keywords, what the strongest keywords. And of course, you want to keep them, those pages ranked for these kind of okay. keywords yeah. over time. Keywords. Strong keywords. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which ones are considered strong? So these are the top keywords, but the top keywords are for the website, that's what I mean, okay? Uh, I can show examples if you have time. And like in your headline, you will put a strong word, but every time someone will uh, look it up in Google, you, oh, yeah? It's not, it, 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 you're oversimplifying it. Oversimplifying? You're over, oversimplifying it. <laughs> um, traffic, what is the traffic for the website? Uh, you see many, many times that people want to get rid of their website after it was hit by Google update, or um, downtrend on general. So you want to uh, make sure that the traffic is still there, that you're either willing to take the risk or saying that's not for me, and also that the, the, the pricing of the website matches, because let's say that they're giving you a 12 months average for the pricing, so 12 months uh, time 35, whatever they, they want the, the, the price for the website. But there was a traffic drop at that after uh, on those 12 months, let's say six months back. So the calculation for you for the profit would not be on 12 months, it would be only for six months. You need to make sure that the offer that you give for maybe the counter offer for this website is based on this. On the six months. Based on the six months, on the right. And finances. So get a profit and loss sheet, PL, uh, verify whatever expenses and income that they have, they, they stated there. If you're making enough money, you can have an accountant. Yeah, but you just the website is successful. These levels, you. No. No, you don't need. Okay, when I am doing due diligence, the first, the three things that you need to, to really start the, 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 the negotiation process. You need? You don't need <laughs> game. Oh, sorry. You need uh, access to their uh, Google Analytics for the website. So we're asking for a viewer permission on those. If they're telling you, uh, give me an offer and then I'll get you access, just don't deal with that person. Uh, in the industry, it's okay to ask that. It's the way that you base your decision on decisions on. Therefore, you need that. So Google Analytics access. Google Search Console. Uh, Google Search Console is the platform that really tells the uh, website owner what's on their websites, for what keywords they rank, uh, what what are the ranking, what is the traffic. Okay, Google Analytics is, is kind of the uh, the ongoing, and Google Search Console showing the rank is showing the ranking. Now, Ahrefs and other tools are estimation tools. They give you some kind of understanding, but the real information is in Google Search Console. And PNL sheet. That's also something that I want to ask for. Perfect profit and loss sheet. How much, what they spent, how much they made, over how long. You want to see the trend, the trend. Okay? Was it making 4,000, now it's making 400? Why? Why? Ask those questions. Yeah. Also on the other end, if it was 400, now 4,000. Why? So I can make 4,000, 40,000. Exactly. 
Uh, more about, so basically about the evaluation, answer these questions. Is this digital asset interesting for me to work on? We're talking about passion, we're talking about a match for the business. You need to understand that. Do I see easy wins? I gave you a few examples here. Is there growth potential? Okay, these goes hand in hand. Maybe you have an unfair advantage. You have access to an audience or you already have a business or something that other people don't have. You have 100,000 followers. Just yes, leverage this. Exactly, exactly. Leverage these kind of things. Um, prepare your phones. QR? Yes, two QRs. Two is too much. Sorry. Uh, this, okay, so this presentation was, an, uh, was a workshop that I did and then I redid it and I forgot about this one. Okay, so first of all, this is a QR code for my uh, calendar. Find the listing, any listing from what I gave, and let's can, talk about it. I can send this QR code to people in the, in the WhatsApp group afterwards. Okay. Uh, it's always like okay. I have legs that you can... Still send it. Okay, so that's my calendar. Uh, what I did in the workshop, I let everybody go pick a listing. Well, we took around uh, uh, eight minutes. They went to Flippa, they chose a listing, and then I told them now, schedule time, and let's see how I can help you with this website. Okay, so they'll have some kind of uh, ground, you know, to understand if this is worth their time or not. Um, gifts, this is coming up. So the resources for everything I spoke about, that's the next QR code. That's the resources page. Uh, so all the marketplaces I mentioned, Facebook groups I mentioned, uh, people to follow, ad networks. Uh, I don't remember what else. It's all in there. It's a lot of information in an hour. We have to do a 